Hey, something, well, I would say a little different, but very different on the channel today. Uh, we've got a, f a quad butterfly. Um, uh, this has been sent to me after they asked me whether I wanted to review it. And I don't often do that. Uh, and I said, yeah, uh, that would be good. And it turned out very quick. So I wonder if there's a lot of guys not going to review it, which is fine. Uh, I got granddaughters and they're going to love this thing. This is going to be great fun for them, I think. So I don't have any issues with it at all. Uh, it comes as a complete package, as you can see there. And uh, you get a spare set of props and they're clearly marked B1 and A2. Uh, so if you get a bent prop or a broken prop, you can just change it. And you actually get a prop removal tool which is a really good little tool slides in there and then you press down and using the leverage it pushes the motor one way and pulls the prop off uh, which is much better than trying to wrench the prop off because you're eventually you can pull the motor through the housing as well so just be careful with that use that tool on any of your quads that you've got with slide on props like this really good little handy tool that is you also get a little phillips screwdriver and the battery bay is held on with a little screw and also the back of the transmitter is as well and you could also strip the quad down so if you didn't want the butterfly wings on it you could just take this top bit off take the butterfly wings off uh, and then fly it as a mm, still a butterfly looking or bug looking uh, quad uh, i did have an accident when i got it out i literally dropped it on the floor and as i as i tried to catch it i actually broke this antenna off here um so i've stuck it back on whether or not it'll last i don't know but um yeah that was purely uh, my error um i don't think you'd normally break it to be perfectly honest anyway it is what it is and it's a little different you get a single cell uh, 600 milliamp hour uh, battery and the battery bay doors quite quite reasonable size to get it all in uh battery bay area sorry is quite good so uh that's pretty good and there's the other loads of other batteries that are with this because it's got a lossy micro uh connector so uh if i find any for you i'll put links down in the description so you can get some extra batteries uh, to give whoever's flying it more flight time the instruction manual isn't particularly brilliant. They seem so they've made a lot of effort with it. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in here, uh, but some of the stuff is a little bit confusing as well. And then it goes on to fly it with an app as well. So we're going to fly it on uh, using the FPV, uh, which has got a little FPV, uh, got a phone holder here, and then you can actually fly it uh, with the app. So you don't actually need the transmitter if you're just going out uh, and you don't want to carry it with you. Or with my granddaughters, what I do is fly it on the gyro, um, or the little ones, so they can actually just rock it around uh, and it will fly and I'll show you how that all works when we get up in the air. So uh, the actual quad itself seems pretty good and uh, there's no prop guards or anything but the legs pretty much protect the props and as you can see they're upside down motors so uh, everything's being drafted from here uh, where normally a prop uh, quad would actually have the props up here and the motors up here so uh, a little bit different design might fly a little bit different I think. Onto the transmitter itself, and it's just a small sort of gaming style transmitter, um, uh, and I quite like these. These are pretty good because uh, it's it's not the tiny one; it's a sort of the medium sized one. So it's good for thumbers, good for pinchers, however you want to fly, and it's mode two only. So uh, this is your throttle. So you press this up, and the quad will uh, ascend. Press it down, it'll come down. Turn to the right is doing that one, and then turn to the left is that one. All the controls are proportional, so if you give it a little bit of turn, it will turn very slowly. Keep pushing it, it'll turn really fast, and of course it keeps going to your centre your stick. And it does have altitude hold, so once it's at a level, it will stay there. It won't position hold, so it will literally just sort of sit at this level, uh, but it can drift around with the wind, uh, or if there's a breeze or anything around. And uh, this one's your direction stick, so if, we're, if we start off like this, we're going to bind it like this, facing that way. If I press forward, forwards that way, uh, this is rolling to the right, this is rolling to the left, this is pitching backwards, and, and that's from the sort of pilot's view I would say so basically this is the front of the quad so now if you know it's around at that angle if I press forward forward is that way because it's forward for the quad itself now that's called I call that normal mode um, uh, and there is something on this called headless mode so if we set it up this way again as I said with the bind in pop it into headless mode which is press this one once and it uh, it beeps and you get flashing LEDs on the actual quad itself so now it's it's headless so it doesn't matter what angle it's at say it's at this obscure angle there if I press forward it's always forward away from me this comes back towards me goes to the right or goes to the left so uh, and it doesn't matter what way it's facing even if it's facing directly towards me if I press forward forward is always in that direction away from where you bound it not something I use but um, some people like it especially if you're a beginner or the kids might like it I, I don't know it's not really something I use 
If you press this button again, it then puts it into return to home and it comes back sort of quite lethargically back towards uh, home so there's no panic and to cancel that you just use the stick. But you're still in headless mode. Uh, so what you have to do is press that one again and then it cancels it out of headless mode. If you want to do flips, you press this one and it will do a quick flip and you choose what direction you want it to flip in. And if you haven't got the one with the Wi-Fi, this actually starts your video as well if you long press this. If you want to uh, take a photo and you haven't got the Wi-Fi one, now I've got the Wi-Fi one so there's no storage on board, it's all stored on my camera, you would use this one with a long press and that would actually take a still photograph. This changes the rates, so it all starts in low rates, which is going to be really low on this, I think. Press this, it'll beep twice, means it's into intermediate rates, goes a little bit faster on all the stick controls. Press it again, and it will go into high rates, or advanced rates, they call it, and that will beep three times, and then it will be the fastest the quad can do. Press it again, it's cyclical, it just comes around, back around to uh, low rates again. Now this is a confusing bit in the actual instructions it says this one is auto takeoff auto landing and all it does is start the motors it primes the motor so they're in idle uh, and then it stops the motors as well so uh, that's the bit that i found a little bit confusing in there also when you calibrate it as well uh, it says calibrate the gyro and calibrate the transmitter i've not had that before but basically i think it does the same thing whether you pull them down to the right pull the two sticks down to the left and i'll show you the calibration in a second when we get going so I've got my phone out and I'm going to fly it first of all with the transmitter and then afterwards we'll just fly it on the app. But we're going to use the phone for the FPV so we're going to be looking through the actual camera on the front of the quad. And as you can see it's sort of on its little bug face there sort of thing. So pop the battery in the battery bay and there you go. And it sort of finishes off the bug look to it quite well. And the nice thing about this is it has got an on off switch here as well. So um, I like that because you can have the battery in and you can turn it on and off when the kids want to have a go. So simply pop that on, As the LEDs are reasonably bright, we've got a bright morning here uh, and you can see them quite clearly and it does light up the little antennas there, the night flight should be pretty good. I'm going to pop the uh, actual transmitter on and as you can see the pulsing changes on the LEDs here and we get a pulsing green and red here, up and down on the throttle, it goes very fast on the pulse, then it goes to solid and this goes to green. So press that and as you can see it starts the motor, it won't auto take off, press it again it kills them. Uh, when you come into land you just pull the throttle right off and as soon as it's finished sort of going down whether it hits the table the ground or lands on your hand it will then uh, cut the motors after a couple of seconds this is not really a very good hand catch because you're going to put your hand up with the motor so i wouldn't really recommend that to be honest land it on the ground would be much safer i'm going to try and put it somewhere sort of level i would say that was pretty level and then this is the calibration so we bring it down and left oh down and right like i say and you get the flashing leds and then if you come down and left, it does exactly the same thing. So I think it just calibrates the, the gyro on the quad itself. And this must be done on somewhere level. So let's just move that all out of the way. And let's move on to the actual phone itself. Okay, so the quad will have set up a Wi-Fi hotspot. So this doesn't use up any data or anything by using the uh, actual app. Uh, li literally just a link between the quad and the actual phone itself. So, uh, and so what we need to do is go on to the actual app and this app is called Butterfly Drone, so <laughs> it's actually just for this one, I think, at the moment. And, and then we connect up. But before we do that, I'll show you where the instructions are in here. And the app comes in Chinese. Uh, you, you have to turn it from Chinese back to English here. Uh, but I, I, to me, I mean, I had tried everything, obviously, before I got it to work. Uh, but literally, press it down there, and it comes to English. Then all the controls are in English, which is great then connect up and there we are we're live and it's actually quite quick um, but it is a very narrow field of view so if I just look up the garden with my head cam and then we just do the same shot with the butterfly it's quite narrow but heck it's uh, <laughs> can't get everything on these little things you've got no controls at the top here so if you just simply press that you get the controls and if we want to fly it with the app we need to turn on the controls for the app uh, for the actual flying here but I'm actually going to turn those off because I'm going to want to fly on here the uh, actual holder for the phone doesn't go at that large it only just about holds my phone actually so uh, I, I think a very large phone it might actually struggle with but uh, sure you can find a way around it <laughs> or just give it to the kids on the phone to fly <laughs> much more fun so I'm uh, gonna start the video 
straight away. So, and, and that's here, press that. And then like I say, it's gonna store it back onto the phone. And there is a, you might be able to see that. There we go, you can see it's actually counting up. So we started to, let's see how we get on then. So like I say, to start the motors. <laughs> no, I haven't started. The, <laughs> that's not this thing making that noise. <laughs> Talk about impressive, eh? <laughs> if you simply press that one. And it's a really quiet little chord. Pop it up and we're away. But it does sound a little bit sort of bee, like there's a load of bees around. God, wow. Well. <laughs> that thump is quite cool, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. So nice little, that's on full yaw. And like I say, altitude hold. So there we go. Honestly, you're out playing with your toys and someone always comes with a bigger toy, don't they? Gee whiz. Oh, it's Coast Guard. So somebody's had a ruined weekend, I'm sure. It's a shame. So that's in low rates and it is very low. So it'd be good for practicing, good for learning. Let's take it up. Press this one to get a beep beep off the transmitter and that puts us up into intermediate rates, which is actually quite nice. It gets a little bit of a move on. <laughs> It really does sound like an angry bunch of bees, to be honest. Yeah. And then press this again, and you get a beep 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 off it, and then we're away with uh, high rates. Now, the yaw has got one of those little mad yaws. If you leave it on yaw, it'll just suddenly spin up. But it's a nice gentle slow down, but it is controllable. It does make you fly. You can just about fly it, but it really takes some, some effort to actually just move it very gently. There we go, so it is possible. You can do it, but if you're new to flying, I bet you wind up doing that all the time and getting nowhere. <laughs> so the way we bound it, I'm going to now try it in headless mode. I'm going to bring it back towards me. And I think we were sort of facing that way when we bound it all together, so I'm going to try it. Press that one, now we're in headless mode, yeah. So, so if I pull that backwards, it's back towards me, forward away. So now I'm going to turn the quad that way, pull it back towards me, you see it's still coming back towards me even though we're at an obscure angle to the quad so that's basically headless mode and one you can sort of spin it and then keep it going in one direction which obviously you couldn't do normally uh, in uh, ordinary mode because it would keep trying to do elliptical spins basically if I press that again it comes in to return to home as I said quite lethargic just press the control stick to change it we're still in headless mode press it again and it now now we've got back to normal Range is, I don't know, <laughs> who would be interested in range on this thing? That's over 30 meters there. That is going to be fine. Oh, the Wi-Fi's tripped out already, which it will do. I, I would have expected that. And will it come back on? This is the thing for the Wi-Fi. Oh, no, it's still not come back on yet. Oh, that's going to be a shame if it doesn't. Oh, no, it's not. I wonder if my phone's just had a problem or whether that's actually the actual app itself has stopped. It's still counting up on the... No, even the video stopped, so I think it might be a phone problem, not a quad problem. Okay, let's we have a play with the other things anyway as we go through. So uh, we do flips, and it does flip reasonably well. I've got a breeze on my back now, which is going to upset it, so you press that button and off you go. Uh, I'm going to reboot my phone because I think that's what's happened there, which is a bit of a shame. But it, it's definitely it's even stopped recording as well, so let's just see how we get on. Or just I'll reboot the app and let's just see how we get on with that. This could well be a phone issue, not an app issue. I, I played around with it indoors and didn't have any problems. So let's just shut that app off. There we go. We're back on the app. So. I'll see. I'll see whether that drops out again. Uh, it could well have been just my phone. So, okay, let's just give this a quick range test again and uh, see how far we go. So, we're going to start the motors again, and then just give it some throttles to take off. And because I've just rebooted everything, it's it'll be back in low rates. And you can clear the screen, which I rather like on this. So this time I'll do it a little bit slower, and let's just see when we lock out. Shall we? That's about. Uh, it's starting to go now. I think. Oh, it's still working. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, we've got low battery now. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so low battery, you get flashing LEDs, and it would just come down to land. And that was just on 30 metres there, so and we were still holding it. So uh, I'll just see if I pick it up and it's still holding the uh, Wi-Fi. No. 
yeah so obviously the range on the Wi-Fi is not very good at all uh, I mean it is a novelty thing I'm sure it's pretty much aimed at kids uh, I'm 100% sure it's aimed at kids uh, so therefore I, I really don't see it being a problem they're going to fly it quite close but we'll see how it flies on the app that's going to be an interesting one yeah and it won't come back on now most Wi-Fi's do um, like I say, it could be a phone issue, but I, my phone's usually really good, that's why I got it. And I'm actually good, just going to fly it without. So, this is, uh, you know, you can just fly it without, you don't need to have it with. Oh no, we're not going to fly it at all. So, the battery's that low, it really won't lift it off. I'll get that charged back up, and I'm going to come out and just fly it on the app. Let's see how we get on with that, shall we? Okay, so <laughs> go in and charge your battery in the Highlands and look what happens. The weather's changed totally. Absolutely miserable. Uh, we've had a drown downpour as well. So anyway, I'm going to cheer myself up with a little flight with a butterfly. How about that? So I'm going to do it on the app this time. Pop it on and the LEDs look nice and bright in uh, this dull weather. Go on to your Wi-Fi settings again as, I, as we did before. And this one actually picks it up straight away. There we go. So we, we, we have actually picked that up. No problem at all. And then actually go on to the app itself. And then connect onto the app. Oop, there we go. Sorry, I shouldn't have pressed that. There we go. That's the trim adjusters um, if you needed to, but I really don't think you will. There we go. And the LEDs have gone off because we've got the controls on. If we turn the controls off and we're just using the uh, Wi Fi FPV, then you'll get it's waiting to bind to the transmitter, so it's not bound to anything at that when it's like that. So we're going to fly straight away, I think, and um, let's pop the video on. There is side controls on this one. You press this one, it sort of opens up the extra features. You've got VR glasses if you want. You've got headless mode, and we can calibrate it here as well. So I'm going to press it to calibrate it. We're on somewhere level. That's it done. Pop that out of the way. Uh, and we've got three different rates. And I've done a video on how to fly using an app, and I'll put a link down in the description for you. So start the motors here. And really quiet when it first starts and once it gets going this is noise noises like a little buzzy bees there we go so that's in low rate there's a tiny bit of breeze in the garden i mean tiny and the controls are exactly the same as we had uh, on the uh, with the transmitter so this is your throttle and your yaw and then this is your direction one here whoops <laughs> pay attention to what you're doing <laughs> and you see the altitude hold does take a little while to sort of get kick in uh, but the, the they work, they don't work sort of thing. It's one of those things. So. It'll probably be fine for the rest of the flight now. So we can up the rate up to 60%. That gives us a little bit more. It can fight against the breeze a tiny bit. And then 100% really does give us a little bit more. Now my grandkids love flying these on the gyro. That's, you press this one on and now this is controlling it. Your phone's controlling it on the gyro. So you can see it moving about there. So we'll go to the left, to the right forward and back you just tilt it and the kids love it because they they just just find it brilliant sort of thing uh, it's not really my thing but but they like it and then if you put it in headless mode of course you can actually turn the turn the quad round and you're still going away from you and back towards you the annoying beep is just telling you it's in headless mode uh, and you can turn that down just with your phone but i should i should turn headless off now uh, it works exactly the same as the other one and now we're back in control. I tend to get the kids to turn what way the quad's facing because um, they're only little anyway. So, uh, so they would now turn that way and then come that way. So, but just the way I do it. <laughs> and then we're back into normal mode. Has got a flip button. Let's see if it flips. Yep, it flips. Like I say, the altitude holds sort of holding okay now. The yaw's a little bit wild in high rates, but you can do it if you're very gentle with it. You can still do it. It does make you fine on your adjustments though. And 60% it flies really nicely, I think. You've actually got a voice control on this. I haven't found it work at all. If I put that on landing or anything else, right, left. <laughs> it's, I've not found it very good. Oh, there we go. And <laughs> there's both the antenna popped off, which actually I think makes it look a bit better, but <laughs> they're on the floor somewhere. Uh, I haven't had any luck with the voice control, uh, but it actually looked like it was working there. So yeah, it's jumping in on my voice. <laughs> Crazy. So take off. Yeah, it's responding, but it's not actually doing it. So another way we do it. Forward. Forward. Left. 
<laughs> I don't know, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Land in. Land in. See, it listens to what you're saying, but it doesn't do what you've asked. <laughs> Forward. Hey, it's working. Left. Left. Right. Right. Forward. Left. <laughs> Land in. Land in. Right, it's working. <laughs> of sorts. <laughs> you could probably get the impression, even though I've tried this several times, I'm not overly impressed with it. As you can see, as I'm speaking, it's picking up voice bits that I haven't said anything like take off yet. It's still started the motor, so unless they get that sorted out, I would be really nervous on using it, especially with kids around. Mind you, they probably have a screen in the garden with it, to be perfectly honest, wouldn't they? So I'm going to turn that off, I think. Or has that turned it on? Right. Oh, yeah, it's turned it. It's on, not off. Let's turn that off. Right, don't touch that. I'm not going to touch that button now. Uh, right, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually, it's got a sort of mission planner thing on it, um, or course where you, where you want to go and everything. So I'll show you how that works. Again, not one of my favourites, but I'll show you anyway. See, so once that um, altitude hold holds, it's fine. So we literally press that one there, and then we can just you draw where you want it to go. And it's gradually going around that really nice and slowly. Some of them go mad, actually. So, But you can see it just follows the course of what you've done. So do a figure of eight. But this one's really quite lethargic. Some of them just go off at such a rate. But you can up. You can lift it up and drop it down. And it, of course, it's not taking account of the breeze or anything like that. So it's, it's not my... I don't find it particularly good. The kids actually don't mind it, actually. They find it quite good fun. Um, and again, this is the kids' thing. But <laughs> and actually, uh, I really am preferring it without the antenna on, so it's... Uh, but I suppose it doesn't really look too much like a butterfly. I'm not convinced it looks a huge amount of love like a butterfly apart from the wings, anyway. That's basically the app all covered. And obviously you can do your selfies and everything with it, so... Um, but I showed that when we were doing the other one. Let's just turn that around a wee bit. There we go. And the camera angle's quite narrow, and it does drop out of Wi-Fi very quickly. Hello, we are back on there. There we go. Try and take a couple of stills. There you see, it's holding quite nicely now. It's just the breeze catching it now. <laughs> there we go. So, all in all, it's okay for what it is, I think. The kids will have a great fun playing with it. Uh, they haven't had a go with this one yet, but they've had a go with some other, other little quads that you can fly on the gyros and everything. And they love it. It's really good. And uh, you get the flashing LED shows the battery's running down. And like I say, seems pretty good, I think, for what it is. Uh, I'll summarise it inside as per normal, and I'll do a little night flight with it, which will look pretty cool. And uh, it looks like it... <laughs> It'll be up to the kids whether or not Grandad has to repair the actual uh, uh, antenna on it, or whether or not we uh, <laughs> whether or not we leave it like that. I quite like it like that. And uh, chucking it down with rain. Welcome to Scotland. Okay, dokes, so there we go. We're all done. I've tried everything on it and had a blast doing it. Come on. Uh, now, when this very first came out and I, I got it for review, it was over forty pounds, so it was about fifty-five dollars. Um, and literally just finished it off the review and I just checked it online and actually it's come down to £30 and now $40. Now that's more what it's aimed at. When it was over £40 I was thinking, cracky, that's a lot of money for this. Uh, but now, 30 quid. I can see people going for it. It's actually good fun. Uh, the kids have had to go with it since, and they really love it, obviously. Uh, really good good fun. Um, we just had such a blast with the voice control, because you can just virtually say anything, and it just throws in random words to do what it wants to do. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Whether or not that's my phone, I don't know, but I 
we certainly wouldn't have a lot of confidence in it. Uh, but the kids thought it was an absolute scream because everyone's shouting controls at it and it's not doing what you're shouting, basically. And then you'll say something totally random and it takes left and it goes left, as you saw in the uh, review. So, hey ho, that's just the way it is. The app worked really nice and I like the app. It worked really well. Uh, the transmitter worked extremely well. These are a nice little uh, transmitter and it would probably do 50 to 70, 80 meters. Uh, I can't see why on earth you'd fly this that far away. Um, so I haven't bothered testing it on that. Uh, 30, 40 meters, absolutely fine. The Wi-Fi on the app uh, did fail, uh, though the app went over 30 meters quite, just about quite happily, uh, but the Wi-Fi did fail a couple of times. A couple of times it came back on, other times it didn't, mostly it came back on actually. So, But I've put in the honest review as the way it works is the only way I can do it, uh, and I've put that in so you've actually seen it sort of failing and not coming back on. Uh, whether that's a phone issue with my particular brand of phone, I don't know, uh, but uh, you've got the transmitter to use anyway, and the app generally, when it kept it in close, never had any problem with it at all. So perhaps just it doesn't want to go over sort of 25 to 30 meters would be an absolute max on it. Uh, and again, I can't really see why to fly any further. Like I say, transmitter worked really well and really good fun to use. The phone uh, it holder is quite small. That's not really that large. My phone just about fitted in it, but I've not got the largest phone in the world. If you've got a problem with it, you could just either snap that bit off or just put your phone in there sticking out a bit and just whack an elastic band around it. Not the end of the world by any means. The battery uh, gave us about uh, five minutes of flight between five and six minutes I was getting if I was gentle with it uh, and no problem at all and they actually do I've checked it out they do six batteries and a battery charger that will charge it all up in an hour apparently uh, and I'll put a link down in the description for you uh, go and check that out uh, the actual stock battery took about 45 minutes to an hour to charge on the stock one but if you've got six batteries the kids would be absolutely god you'd be made up you'd be flying forever sort of thing uh, just out of interest have a look at the uh, if you know even if you're not interested in buying one use the link down below and just go and have a look at the uh, the uh, promotional stuff they've put out about this with flying with nature and, and it gives the illusion that you're actually going to be like a real butterfly out there sort of thing you're not I can assure you um, but it, it's quite funny and the, you know the stuff they put in there with the still images from it and video clips apparently and nothing like it at all but I know all the manufacturers do it but it just gets to me sometimes but hey hope it's just the way it is that's why we do honest reviews I guess uh, the only thing you know obviously I did break off the antennae um, pff, that's they were I broke that one when I got it out uh, first of all they do stick back on and I've stuck them on several times actually the kids actually like it without they're not really not that bothered uh, and I'm not bothered I'm certainly not too bothered either I haven't bothered taking the wings off because to be honest it is a flying butterfly take that off you might as well spend 30 quid on a different drone so uh, would be my impression really good fun yep I'm just going to go and be the bestest granddad in the world uh, hand it over to the grandkids and actually I'll get a bit of flying in as well Thank you.